Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red deck called Turbo Tutelage, which is a deck built around the enchantment Sphinx's Tutelage, which tries to mill the opponent out, which is the alternate win condition of putting all the opponent's cards from their library into their graveyard, so when they go to draw a card from an empty library, they lose the game. So the way Sphinx's Tutelage works is, whenever we draw a card, target opponent puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, and if those cards happen to share the same color, we can repeat this process, and then also an activated ability for five generic and a blue mana to draw a card and then discard a card, which is an additional way to trigger the Sphinx's Tutelage, which otherwise would only trigger once every turn on our draw step, but that's why we also play a lot of cards that say draw a card on it, so that we get to trigger the Sphinx's Tutelage multiple times, so that we get to mill the opponent out very quickly. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the entire deck here, starting out with some removal spells, which is a way to stay alive. So we get Lightning Axe, single red for an instant that deals 5 damage to target creature, but we do have to pay an additional cost, which is either we have to discard a card or pay 5 generic mana. So most of the time we're gonna have to discard a card, and we do have some Madness cards in the deck to synergize with a Lightning Axe. Next up we have Galvanic Bombardment, which is a new addition from Eldritch Moon. For a single red we get to deal X damage to target creature, where X is 2 plus the number of cards named Galvanic Bombardment in our graveyard. So the more Galvanic Bombardments we play, the more damage they will do. And in a deck that draws a lot of cards and puts a lot of cards in its own graveyard as well, Galvanic Bombardment is pretty awesome. And next up we have Jace Vrind's Prodigy, which is excellent in this deck, since not only does he trigger the Sphinx's Tutelage with his front side whenever we draw and discard a card, but once he transforms he can buy back a bunch of instants and sorceries from our graveyard and helps us stay alive. And next up we have Thing in the Ice, which is another good way to stay alive, since for 2 mana we get an 0-4 Defender, which does a pretty good job of blocking, and it comes into play with 4 ice counters on it. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, we can remove an ice counter. Once we remove all ice counters, we get a Woken Horror, which will return all non-horror creatures to their owner's hands. So this is a nice way to reset the board and buy us some time, and could also just get there with 7 damage every turn. Next up we have Disperse, which is another cheap answer. For one and a blue we get to return target a non-land permanent to its owner's hand, so we can use this to bounce opposing creatures or planeswalkers, but we could also use this on our own Sphinx's Tutelage for example to save it from some sort of enchantment removal spell. So pretty versatile card and also very cheap, which is important in this deck. Next up we have Take Inventory, which works in a similar way as the Galvanic Bombardment. So for one and a blue we get to draw a card, but then we get to draw cards equal to the number of cards named Take Inventory in our graveyard. So the more of these we play, the more cards we get to draw for just one and a blue. Then we have Oath of Jace. For two and a blue we get to draw three cards and then discard two cards. The rest of the card is not super relevant, although we do have a few Planeswalkers, so at the beginning of our upkeep we get to scry X, where X is the number of Planeswalkers we control, so that could come up. But the important part here is draw 3, discard 2, since this is a way to trigger Sphinx's Tutelage 3 times for just 3 mana, and if we do happen to play some Madness cards, then we can discard those for value. Then of course Sphinx's Tutelage, the card we would like to have in our opening hand. We also have Fevered Visions, which is another nice card that lets us draw an additional card every turn. So the way it works is at the beginning of each player's end step, that player draws a card, and if that player is our opponent and has four or more cards in hand, Fevered Visions deals two damage to him or her. So each player gets to draw an additional card on their end step, but the opponent could end up taking 2 damage every turn if they have too many cards in hand. So we are giving the opponent extra cards, but we don't really mind since actually that helps them empty their library faster. 
and uh, this also of course helps trigger Sphinx's tutelage an additional time and we could redirect the two damage to opposing planeswalkers for example if those are an issue. Then we have some one-offs here, Grip of the Royal, for two and a blue we get an instant that taps down target creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step and we also get to draw a card so we're not down on card advantage and we get to trigger Sphinx's tutelage and it also has surge for one on a blue so if we already play the spell that turn then it only costs one on a blue and we also have one copy of Kozilek's return which is a sweeper that deals two damage to each creature and uh, the other part here is not relevant since we're not playing any expensive Eldrazi. Then we have Fiery Temper, which is our Madness card. So 3 damage to target creature or player and Madness for just a single red, which is going to happen pretty often in this deck. So for a single red, being able to deal 3 damage to target creature or player is Lightning Bolt, which is a very powerful magic card. And next up we have Collective Defiance, which works very nicely with Sphinx's Tutelage. So for one and double red we get an Escalate card, so we can pay an additional generic mana to choose an additional mode on the card when we cast it. And the card has three modes. So the first one is target player discards all the cards in his or her hand and then draws that many cards. So this is kind of a windfall type ability which is very powerful with Sphinx's Tutelage since we could end up drawing four or five cards which is a lot of Sphinx's Tutelage triggers. The second mode is that it deals four damage to target creature so just a nice removal spell and the last mode is three damage to target opponent so we could redirect this to a planeswalker for example to take it out or if we happen to be on the creature plan then we can also just use this as a burn spell to the face. Then we have pour over the pages for five mana we get to draw three cards untap up to two lands and then discard a card which is not an issue if we can discard a madness card for example or some excess lands and then of course draw three cards is a nice way to trigger Sphinx's tutelage a bunch of times. Then we have Chandra Flame Color. For 6 mana we get a 4 loyalty planeswalker that can act as an additional sweeper effect. So minus X deals X damage to each creature. Then the zero ability is another windfall type ability. So we get to discard all the cards in our hand and then draw that many cards plus 1. And then the plus 1 ability puts two 3 1 red elemental creature tokens with haste on the battlefield. And we get to exile them at the beginning of our end step. So this is a way to deal some damage if we have to. And then finally we have a Bedlam Reveler, which is 6 and double red, but it costs 1 generic mana less to cost for each instant and sorcery in our graveyard, so it's usually only gonna cost double red, which is of course very cheap. It also has prowess and it's a 3-4, but the important part here is when Bedlam Reveler enters the battlefield we get to discard our hand and then draw 3 cards, it's so another cheap way to draw multiple cards and trigger Sphinx's Tulage multiple times. And of course if we happen to put a bunch of Galvanic Bombardments or take inventories in the graveyard with Battle Reveler, then uh, if we draw additional copies of those cards then they get a lot better. So then the mana base we've got 8 Islands, 7 Mountains, Two Wandering Fumarole, which can also turn into a creature. Two Sulphur Falls. And then we have another new addition from Eldritch Moon in Gaia Reach Sanitarium. It is a legendary land, so we don't want to have two of them in play at the same time, otherwise we have to sacrifice one of them. It adds generic mana to our mana pool, but it has an interesting activated ability, which is for two and tap Gaia Reach Sanitarium. Each player draws a card and then discards a card, which of course works very well with Madness and with Sphinx's Tutelage. And then finally two copies of Highland Lake, which comes into play tapped, but makes both blue and red mana. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which is not bad, it is missing the tutelage of course. Uh, but we do have double take inventory, double oath of Jace, so we do have a lot of card draw, so I think I'm willing to keep this one. And let's lead off with, I might as well lead off with Sulphur Falls, since we don't have a turn one play, and we might need to double red early. 
but probably doesn't matter here. Let's see what we're up against. All right, Foul Orchard, black and green. All right, Highland Lake, a bit late here. Would have liked to play this turn one, but I think here, let's see, we could play, take inventory, try to hit our land drops. We have two draw steps to draw land, so we can play Oath of Jace next turn, or we could just play another take inventory next turn, which isn't terrible, so I think I'm okay with playing the untapped island here and casting take inventory. Disperse, all right, so we have some ways to deal with annoying permanence. Just need to find that Sphinx's tutelage as quickly as possible. Opponent leads with Primal Druid, which we don't really mind since it doesn't attack our life total. Probably indicates that our opponent is playing some sort of emerge deck. So here we found an island. So I think we play Oath of Jace, since it draws more cards than take inventory. And that way we're more mana efficient. And hope to find the tutelage. Or maybe another enchantment that draws cards. All right, Fevered Visions is not bad, so we have to discard a card here. And I don't think Galvanic Bombardment is gonna be great here for us, so I don't mind discarding it. And then might as well discard the Highland Lake here since we have plenty of lands. So let's see if our opponent has a good turn three play. Evolutionary Leap, all right, we don't really mind. A good combo with the creature the opponent just played here, since now they get to a ramp by searching up a land, and they found an Ulamog, all right. So something to keep in mind, but hopefully the game ends before they reach 10 mana. The Oath of Jace triggers, but we don't have any Planeswalkers in place, so it doesn't do anything. So here I think we go ahead and play the Fevered Vision to get that going as soon as possible. Could actually deal some damage to the opponent, which is off to a pretty slow start. Um, but yeah, let's play the Fevered Visions. And get to draw a card, a Lightning Axe, so we could cast this if we have to but would like to combine it with maybe a Fiery Temper. Opponent with Open Nixilus, so they can start drawing some cards. And actually the ultimate here is pretty painful for us since we draw a lot of cards in the deck and we would end up doing a lot of damage. So Fevered Visions can deal two damage to Open Nixilus here. So Fiery Temper plus another Fevered Visions can maybe take out Open Nixilus. Garage Sanitarium is not a bad draw. So let's see, how do we want to approach this? I think we start by casting another Oath of Jace, since that draws the most amount of cards, and then we can Madness a Fiery Temper to deal 3 to Open Nixilus. Seems decent. Other option is casting it Take Inventory, but I think I would rather spend the three mana here. So let's play another Oath of Jace. Gotta sacrifice one of them, but the effect still happens. Uh, so no Sphinx's Tutelage yet. Um, so let's discard the Fiery Temper here. And then I guess another land, which we probably don't need. And then cast with Madness to open Nixilus. And then we can uh, play another mountain. So we have a lot of draw spells in hand, just need to find that one Sphinx's Tutelage. Opponent draws a card with Obnixilus. Fevered Visions should be able to take out Obnixilus here, unless our opponent has an answer for the Fevered Visions. Sylvan Advocate is a play from the opponent. And Primal Druid, so we can use a Lightning Axe to kill the Advocate, but I would rather... So let's kill Nixos, but I would rather wait since we might end up drawing 
a card we would like to discard and there we go Sphinx's tutelage right on time so we can play the tutelage and then let's see we can follow it up with a take inventory and then still have a lightning axe available so let's play the tutelage leave up um, blue and red mana as much as possible could also play the Jace, but the odds of it surviving are pretty low. So I think I'll start by casting the Take Inventory here. Trigger Tutelage twice. And then we still have the Lightning Axe up. And no real need to cast it now since our opponent can still just sacrifice a creature to the Evolutionary Leap. So let's ship it back. Fevered Visions triggers. Opponent is gonna use a leap on the Primal Druid here. So they are getting pretty close to 10 mana for Ulamog. And they found a Kalitas, which we don't really care about. So that triggers again. So I guess we might as well Lightning Axe now. Discarding probably this Jace. And the opponent can sacrifice again to find another creature. Flashback Marauder doesn't really do much here. Opponent already down to 30 cards in their library. And they're gonna play their 8th land here. Pulse of Marasa is gonna gain them a bunch of life and returns a Reclamation Sage, which is unfortunate here since it can kill our Sphinx's Tutelage, but luckily we had another one here. So Fevered Visions triggers for the opponents, they go to 22. They have to discard to hand size. And there we see all those removal spells. Alright, so we can replay a Tutelage. And then we could also cast Collective Defiance right now which would trigger the tutelage a whole bunch of times. Could also keep up Disperse to save the tutelage if your opponent has another removal spell, which I don't hate, since we could still keep up the Guy Reach Sanitarium. So yeah, maybe I do like just playing the tutelage and then protecting it with Disperse. If the opponent doesn't do anything, we activate the Sanitarium end of turn. And then next turn we can go off with Pour Over the Pages and Collective Defiance. So let's mill the opponent a bit more. Maybe take a look at their graveyard real quick. Opponent can attack us for two, which is fine. And let's see if they have another answer for the tutelage. Nope, Liliana is fine. It's not gonna matter in time here. Opponent finds a Green Warden. Alright, that's a problem since that can get the Reclamation Sage back, but not this turn. So Liliana can minus to get back the Reclamation Sage. Alright, so that's actually an issue since now we have to use the Disperse. And the opponent can redo that, not next turn, but in two turns, I guess. So here we can deal two damage to Liliana to take care of that. But we know our opponent has a, a Green Warden of Morassa, so they can combine that again with the Reclamation Sage. Thing in the ice, so I think we replay the Sphinx's Tutelage here and again keep up the Disperse. No need to play the Sanitarium since it's legendary. We're just going to keep up the Sanitarium and Disperse again. And then next turn go with uh, Collective Defiance. They have a Liliana which can get back the Reclamation Sage once again. So Liliana is going to trigger here, 
but in response we could actually just disperse the Liliana so that way our opponent doesn't get to use the minus ability here. I actually think I like that. We could also just Lightning Axe the Liliana but then we discard cards so we have less for Collective Defiance. I think I actually disperse the Liliana here and that way your opponent shouldn't be able to get back the Reclamation Sage here. The Evo Leap still happens, your opponent finds a Sylvan Advocate, which is fine. We're still at 18, so plenty of life to work with. Opponent plays a Nissa Vastwood Seer, which is gonna find a Forest. If there's one left, and there is. But actually, the more cards your opponent draws here, the better for us, since that helps us with the mill plan. Opponent plays Sylvan Advocate. They also have a Shambling Vent in play, to keep in mind. They minus, so they make a 4-4, four four, so they're gonna try and kill us with damage here. Can finish off the Nissa. Opponent has to discard to hand size. Both of Jace triggers, but no Planeswalkers in play. Mill the opponents, and now... I think it's time to go with Pour Over the Pages here. Untap two Mountains. Discard a random card, doesn't really matter at this point. And then target the opponent three times. And then we can go Collective Defiance, target player, discards their hand, and that's gonna be us. And Sphinx's Utilage triggers six times. And there we go. All right, so opponent goes to draw a card for their draw step. No cards left. Actually, we still get a Fevered Visions tutelage trigger, but uh, milling the opponent with no cards left doesn't win us the game quite yet, but as soon as they draw a card, they are dead. On to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which is pretty much perfect here, since we have a tutelage plus two Oath of Jace to trigger the tutelage a bunch of times, and uh, all the lands to cast our spells. Just maybe missing some early play here on turn 1 and 2, but that's fine. As long as we're not up against an aggressive deck, this should be pretty strong. Opponent with Mountain. So here, let's play Mountain and ship it back. And see if our opponent has a turn 2 creature here of some sort. Hopefully they're not some sort of mono red deck. Eee, Storm Chaser Mage is kind of a problem. So 1-3 Prowess Flying Haste can hit pretty hard. So we might want to kill that with Fiery Temper as soon as we can. But I think I still like playing the Tutelage right now. Alright, Galvanic Bombardment doesn't quite kill the Storm Chaser. But maybe it can kill another creature next turn. So let's play the tutelage so we get that out there as soon as possible. And then next turn we can uh, see if we want to play Oath of Jace or if we want to kill the Storm Chaser. I guess we can do both by discarding the Fiery Temper to Oath of Jace and Madness it. And a Majoring Bully. So that one we can kill with the Galvanic Bombardment. So we get hit for only one but our opponent might be saving the pump spells so they get the most amount of prowess triggers in the same turn. So let's target our opponent with tutelage. So we can only kill one creature if we want to play Oath of Jace here, but that might just be fine. So we can play Oath of Jace, Madness, a Fiery Temper, try and kill the Storm Chaser. I guess if your opponent has an instant for single red, they can save the Storm Chaser Mage. I think that's still fine. So let's play out Oath of Jace. 
draw three, discard two. And we drew another Fiery Temper, all right. Can't cast both of them, unfortunately. And I think Jay's Friends Prology is probably gonna eat a removal spell from the opponent, so I don't think we can really count on him. Uh, so let's discard him and then tutelage the opponent three times. And then Madness, I would like to use that, and I think we take out the Storm Chaser here and see if our opponent has a response. They do not. All right, good. So one creature down. And next turn we could go Fevered Visions plus Galvanic the Majoring Bully, or we could play another Oath of Jace plus Fiery Temper. But our opponent is going off here with double Titan Strength. So they're gonna deal a boatload of damage this turn, but they're not adding any more creatures to the board. So once we kill this Majoring Bully, unless our opponent has a lot of burn spells in hand, they might be all out of action, which would not be bad for us. So we take 10, go down to 8. And uh, let's see here, Tutelage triggers, another Fiery Temper. So... I think I start out by casting Galvanic Bombardment on the Majoring Bully. Although it's kind of scary to play the Fevered Visions if her opponent has a lot of burn spells, like they show us here with cards like Twin Bolt. Um, since that way they can draw into more burn spells to maybe finish us off. Um, so maybe going with the Oath of Jace is better. So we can go Oath of Jace, Madness, Fiery Temper to kill the Majoring Bully. And I think that might be better here. That way if we draw into a mountain we can still keep up Galvanic Bombardment. Instead we drew a lots of islands. So Tutelage the opponent three times. And then Fiery Temper the Majoring Bully. Hope this works, and it does. All right, so next turn we could maybe look at this Battlem Reveler, which could also serve as a blocking creature. Opponent with Abbot of Carol Keep. So they exile the top card and they get to play it. And it was a land, so they just played the land. But nothing else. Alright, another nice defensive creature and thing in the ice here. So let's see, we have one, only two instants in the graveyard, so Battle and Reveler still costs six mana here. But I think I like Thing in the Ice and then Galvanic Bombardment, the Abbot. And then we still get to keep up Fiery Temper during the opponent's turn to maybe take out another... Um, Storm Chaser Mage if our opponent has one, although we milled two of them already, so they only have one left in their deck. So yeah, let's play Thing in the Ice. And then Galvanic Bombardment, I think right now, just to play around a bunch of bump spells, maybe saving the Abbot. And then we, I think we just keep up Fiery Temper since I don't want to risk playing Fevered Visions and giving the opponent burn spells if we don't have to, and then maybe next turn we can play the Battle and Reveler and looks like our opponent's had enough. They're out of creatures, so that means they don't have a constant source of damage left. And they're already down to 14. So I think it's time for Battle and Reveler here. Um, we could have even cast this Fiery Temper end of turn just to remove another Ice Counter and deal some damage to the opponent. Could also activate uh, Tutelage's activated ability. But let's cast a Reveler here, I think. We can also Madness the Fiery Temper if we would like to, since we're discarding it. 
So target the opponent three times. And let's see, we found a Disperse. So I think I would rather not cast a Fiery Temper here and keep up the Disperse. And then next turn we can go Sphinx's Eulogy again, or we can just go Chandra, use a zero ability, and that should do it. So opponent, we milled the last Storm Chaser Mage, so not too many haste creatures we need to be afraid of. And Collective Defiance here is also going to be excellent, so we have lots of options here. We can go Collective Defiance or Chandra, might as well go with uh, Chandra here, I guess. Also triggers Prowess. Use a zero ability. Could have even gone Sphinx's Tutelage plus Collective Defiance, which might have even been better, since that plays around our opponent casting a random Disperse on our Tutelage. Opponent has Galvanic Bombardment, which is fine. And there we go, on to the next one. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which is a little light on action. We don't have a tutelage, only two spells. I think we can do better. And yeah, I guess we can keep this one. We've got a sanitarium here to churn through our deck a bit faster. We've got lots of removal spells, so we should be able to buy some time until we find a tutelage. And let's lead off with a Fumeral, since that always comes into play tapped. And then turn two we can go Mountain, keep up Galvanic Bombardment, and then play the Sanitarium so we can use the ability. Alright, opponent with a turn two Thing in the Ice. So it's gonna be kind of tricky to kill this with our burn spells, we would have to spend at least two of them. So let's just ship it back and Fevered Visions is going to be pretty decent, especially if our opponent is on a more controlling deck, then we don't mind giving them extra cards since removal spells don't do much against us. A second thing in the ice is a problem since killing one of them is reasonable, killing two of them might be a bit tricky. Alright, Lightning Axe helps, so we could actually kill both of them right now, and I think I will, since now our opponent doesn't have any counter spells up, since they look to be some sort of Asper control deck, so we can a Lightning Axe, one of them, discard Fiery Temper, cast this with Madness on the other one, and then Galvanic Bombardment, the other one as well. So we take care of both. And we spent three cards to deal with two cards, so it's not the end of the world. So got rid of the opponent's win conditions, hopefully. And then next turn, Fevered Visions should be decent. Although our opponent could be holding a counter spell now. So they might counter the Fevered Visions. So we could just activate the Sanitarium if we want to, but I would rather get the Fevered Visions countered than our Sphinx's Tutelage getting countered. Could even activate the Fumeral next turn, since it costs 4 to activate, and go on the damage plan. But sure, let's just run out the Fevered Visions here and get it countered most likely. Unless our opponent wants to draw some extra cards as well. Alright, they're gonna let it resolve. They're gonna draw two cards, we're gonna draw one card. With comparative analysis. They're gonna draw a card with Fevered Visions and take two damage. Alright, take inventory is not bad, so let's lead with that. And I think we just play an island so that we can activate the 
Sanitarium, end of turn. And another comparative analysis from the opponent, so they're gonna take two damage pretty consistently here, but they might also draw into an answer for the Fevered Visions. Maybe an Anguished Unmaking can take care of it. Of course, still need to find our Sphinx's Tutelage. Six mana for the opponent. And they're gonna play a big Planeswalker here in Sorin. Which can draw them extra cards. The revealed Declaration in Stone, which is fine. So end of turn we can activate the Sanitarium. Discard a tap land here. Opponent discards the Declaration in Stone. They take two from the Fevered Visions and we're gonna redirect it to the Sorin. Opponent has to discard two hand size. They discard Telling Time and Fiery Temper uh, plus an activation from the Fumeral should be able to kill the Sorin. So since we don't have anything else to do, might as well activate the Fumeral here. So deals 4 to Sorin, drops to 1 loyalty, can go back up to 2 and then Fevered Visions should be able to finish it off. Otherwise we can use the Fiery Temper to deal with it. Alright, another take inventory, we'll draw 2 cards. Sorin reveals a Prairie Stream, so doesn't deal us any damage. And did they find an answer to the Fevered Visions or is Sorin going to die? They found a Gideon, which is not bad. And they're gonna make a token. So we could actually go after Gideon here with Fiery Temper, but if your opponent has a counter spell for the Fiery Temper, I would rather just make sure to kill the Sorin, so their opponent doesn't have two active Planeswalkers. So let's deal to the Sorin, take care of that. Opponent has to discard to hand size once again. And another Fevered Visions, alright, so this probably gets countered. Let's see, we could also just cast take inventory first, see what we draw. Uh, I kind of want to grip of the royal the Gideon when it becomes a creature. And that might bait a counterspell from the opponent, so then next turn we can maybe resolve the Fevered Visions. But I guess we can lead with the take inventory here since it's pretty cheap. Opponent might also want to counter this since we draw two cards with it. And they might have lots of counter spells in their hands that they're otherwise not gonna be able to use. So the opponent has to decide if this is important enough to counter or not, and they are going to counter it. So now we can resolve the Fevered Visions which I think is better than anything else. And then I don't think I grip of the royal token. Doesn't seem relevant. So let's just cast Fevered Visions. Play a mountain and ship it back. Draw two cards off of Fevered Visions. Alright, another take inventory is not bad and a Kozilek's return can clear at least one token, so we might see our opponent plus one Gideon here so that they don't lose the Gideon to the two Fevered Visions. And that's indeed what happens. So we take seven, still at eleven. Let's see if they have some sort of creature they want to play here, or if they're gonna hold on to their counter spells. So let's deal two to Gideon. Two more to Gideon, down to one loyalty. Opponent has to discard to hand size. And they discard a Languish. So let's cast another take inventory here. Get it countered most likely. So no Awaken just 3 mana counter our uh, 
card. So I'm actually liking just keeping up the Crypt of the Royal plus Fiery Temper. So that way they don't get to use their mana here end of turn. So we draw two cards. Galvanic Bombardment is not terrible. So what we can do here is Galvanic Bombardment the token, then Fiery Temper the Gideon and Grip of the Royal the Gideon since it'll have Surge. So Gideon becomes a creature. As soon as they enter combat we have to act. So I think we lead off with the Galvanic Bombardment here. Let's see if our opponent counters this, or lets it happen. Opponent lets it happen, and then still before combat, we can try to grip of the royal with Surge, the Gideon. Broken Concentration to counter it, and then we can try to Fiery Temper the Gideon, and we might see another counter spell here. So I wanted to use the Fiery Temper on our opponents and redirect it to the Gideon, but I accidentally clicked on the Gideon, which now of course was a creature, so we didn't get to redirect the damage to the Gideon, which was a mistake. But uh, Fevered Visions should be able to clear the Gideon anyways, but we did take unnecessary damage, so hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us. So we drew Sphinx's Tutelage, which is nice. So let's see if this resolves, probably doesn't. Alright, it does, our opponent may have run out of counter spells. So now we have the option of using the Sanitarium or the tut Tutelage's activated ability. Opponent has an Avacyn, end of turn. Not much we can do about it. So let's mill the opponents. Mill the opponent once again, found another tutelage. So hopefully we don't die here. Alright, Jace Unraveler of Secrets is fine. They're gonna plus to scry one and draw a card. Go to combat. I guess we can draw into a Disperse with the Sanitarium. Yeah, might as well, just in case. Alright, we found a thing in the ice, so no Disperse. Opponent has to discard a card, we're gonna discard an Island. Planar Outbursts. And there we go, Anguish the Making is an important one to mill. And we milled both of them, so that's likely the only answers our opponent has to our Sphinx's tutelage. But of course, we are at 2 life here, so we're almost dead to our opponent's creatures. And now also a Shambling Vent, which is a problem. So I think we still redirect to the Jace here, rather than our opponent, since we're not killing our opponent with damage. Found a Galvanic Bombardment, mill the opponent. So let's see, we can play the Tutelage. And then activate the Sanitarium, which will mill our opponent for at least four. Then end of turn two Fevered Visions, that's another eight, so that's twelve. And if we draw into a draw spell with the Sanitarium, we could win. Let's see, Galvanic Bombardment would deal 4 damage right now, so we could kill the Avacyn. But then we're still dead to Shambling Vent plus Kalitas. So I think our best chance here is to play the Tutelage. Activate the Sanitarium, which of course also lets our opponent draw a card, so that's one less card in their library. We found Highland Lake, which is not ideal. So target our opponents. And still 12 cards. So 
they're only gonna get milled for eight. We can play the thing in the ice to block Kalitas or Shambling Vant, but we're still pretty dead. But I guess we might as well. We don't have any instant speed draw spells, so we can't play the ones we draw off of Fevered Visions. But I guess if we draw another Galvanic Bombardment, we could technically stay alive, or like a Lightning Axe, perhaps. And I think we Galvanic Bombardment right now. The Avacyn deals four. Fevered Visions triggers and hope to get lucky, I guess. It's only two. It's only... Oh, that's a bunch. There's a Disperse. All right, so we might actually have gotten there. Yep. That's two more. Zero cards left in library. And there we go. Wow. So we got pretty lucky on those last few tutelage triggers. But if we don't take that five unnecessary damage from Gideon, I think we uh, get there even if her opponent gets to play out one more turn. So uh, yeah, that was pretty sweet. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day.